Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And we turn now in Unit 4 to page 748749 and then finally on 751. We're going to be looking at three haiku poems um, by two Japanese uh, uh, great poets, Bashu and Chiyoju. Um, in, in, just to remind, for your notes at level 2B, go back to page 748 and remind yourself that haiku is this classical Japanese form of poetry, unrhymed verse form, arranged in three lines of five, seven, and five syllables. Uh, let's read some biography on first Basho and then Shosho. Notice your, you have dates for Basho as 1644 to 1695, and then for Shiojo, you have 1703 to 1775. One of the greatest Japanese poets, I'm reading on 749, one of the greatest Japanese poets, Basho, raised the haiku from a comic form to a high art. In his youth, he lived in luxury, but he later devoted himself to haiku. Shiojo was the wife of a samurai's servant, and her husband died. She became a nun and studied poetry. And then they give you the drawing uh, for Basho. Okay, let's listen now to all three of these poems. And as we do so, there's two things I want you to write down because haiku are to be experienced far more than to be read. So at, as you finish with each one of these at level one, ask yourself simply this question, jot it down. What is being described? It can be an object, it can be a motion or a feeling, okay? So for each one of these, we'll just listen and then we'll come back to uh, briefly uh, annotate, all right? Here we go. Three haiku. Temple bells die out. The fragrant blossoms remain. A perfect evening. Basho. Dragonfly catcher, how far have you gone today in your wandering? Chiyojo, bearing no flowers, I am free to toss madly like the willow tree. Chiyojo. All right, let's look at each one of these and see, and again, I'm hoping that our study here will lead you to find some interest in other kinds of haiku and Japanese poets as well. There are way more than just uh, Basho and Chiyocho, but both of them are really gifted. Look at the first one, and let's just work with them very quickly. Look at the first one. Temple bells die out, the sound uh, uh, dying out. The fragrant blossoms remain. Notice how we have the juxtaposition of both hearing and smelling at the same time. And then the final line, a perfect evening. What's being described here? Jot it down what you think is being described here. Of course, one observation that can be made about this is that we are trying to capture a feeling of the end, the end of the day, the evening. Okay. By the way, Walt Whitman wrote a poem called uh, an, an, an Ended Day, and his last lines there are triumph, transformation, jubilant. The idea that at the end of a day you want to feel great. What makes a perfect evening? The temple bells, you know, the sound of the temple bells is gone, and all that remains is the beautiful smell of the blossoms, the fragrant blossoms. What's being suggested here, maybe? That life is a process of moving from morning to evening, from sound, worship sound, to silence, the temple bells. Let's look at Chiosho's second one, Dragonfly Catcher. How far have you gone today in your wandering? Now, what's being described here in the form of an interesting rhetorical question? We might point out that what is being suggested here is that job and work is kind of like a journey of a kind, a wandering. And in fact, all of our life is a type of wandering. And we often don't think in those terms, but each of us every day take a little journey. Right? And sometimes it's hard to understand that we've done anything. Sometimes as well, stability or stasis is actual movement. The other Chiyocho um, haiku, bearing no flowers, I am free to toss madly like the willow tree. What's being described here, some have seen this as a poem that basically is arguing for independence. And that's beautiful because it is Chiyocho, woman, in a Japanese patriarchal culture, 
the idea here is that I don't have to be like everyone else. I am free to toss madly like the willow tree. Uncontrollable, uncontainable is in fact, ironically, what, what Whitman will say about his barbaric yap at the end of Song of Myself. These two can go together. Now, let's do this really quickly because we're now working with Daniel C. Buchanan's translation of these three haiku. How is this poem, these three poems, different for you? I'm asking a, I'm asking a 2B question now. How are these three poems different for you from Walt Whitman's I Hear America Singing? How are these different poems for you? We will qualify Walt Whitman as free verse. I hear America singing. That's what we will call it. It's a free verse, piece of free, free verse writing, right? Haiku, very ordered, very much about the rules of the game. Again, going back to page 748. Remember, it's 575 in terms of the number of syllables there, okay? Well, there you go, an introduction to these three haiku. I hope it leads you to others as well. The great American poet Ezra Pound loved to try and translate these. You might look at those um, in passing. Thank you.